Hello, this is Greg Allison, Green Greg's Garden and Worm Farm, coming to you on the 20th of March, 2020. I'm going to talk to you today about bugging in and bugging out. I plan to do a very extensive video on this or series of videos sometime back and had delayed it uh, because I wanted to, you know, do a more developed program on this. But you know what? Time's a wasting. There's things you need to know and need to know now because the time to make decisions could possibly be for you right now. We're in a situation where you may not be able to bug out soon. So if that's your choice, you may need to go. So I'm gonna get into that in just a minute. So I really look at bugging in and bugging out uh, in different ways. And I see different forms of bug out. I don't see just you either bug in or bug out. You either uh, bug in, your bugging in is staying where you're at, prepping and have all your supplies where you haven't planted it and stay right there in your home for the duration, no matter what. That's bugging in. Of course, it's bug in with provisions to run and bug out later should the heat get too hot in the kitchen. And that's what most preppers, a lot of preppers take that approach where some will bug out immediately. If you're in a city, <laughs> you're in a bad spot. So whether you bug in or bug out, it's going to depend on a lot of things. However, the prospects of a quarantine really changes the dynamic of that in a couple of different interesting ways. So yeah, before we go into that, let's talk a little bit about other things you need to know for prepping because I've told you in this channel from some time back that if you're not already prepping, it may be too late. I actually said that. I've said, guys, if you're, if you're not prepped, run. You should have done it already. Bet you should have done all your research. And I was saying that a few months ago and I was serious. Now you see why things are happening. The first shoes dropped, more shoes may come. So let's talk a little bit about other things that, that go on with this prepping because I've mentioned that you need food supplies. And I'm gonna tell you, you should, uh, you should uh, definitely consider uh, prepwithgreg.com because you need long-term food storage. Yeah, there is a delay. Every time I open this, the delay period gets a little bit longer. I'm not even putting food. Pre-order your food supply now. When you pre-order via phone or email, uh, your approach, uh, uh, when we are approaching your ship date, secure your place in line. My friends, yeah, the lines are backing up to get this stuff, but go to your grocery stores and look how it looks there. The day may come soon. You may not be able to go to your grocery store. How you get there may be highly controlled. It's not to say there won't be food, but what kind of food are you going to get? Um, this is your chance to prepare. E even in some, you know, we don't know how long this quarantine is going to last, my friends. There are some indicators that this could go on for many, many months. And then maybe other shoes drop after this, different types of shoes. And we know that the uh, source of this quarantine may come back. So, well, and, and the depths of this quarantine takes from many forms. There are, are those mandated quarantines that seem to be growing and getting deeper and deeper. And then there is the prospect for self-quarantine. Even if there's no quarantine, maybe you don't want to go out. That's a self-quarantine. So virtually it's the same for you. And if you don't want to go out, the guys who run the stores may not want to go out. So they get short-staffed. So even if they are open, it may be hard to run them. So there should be a pretty good ready labor pool with so many people uh, getting laid off. That said, we'll see how that goes, but prep with Greg.com. Is that snazzy snazzy picture there? <laughs> anyway, so there are a good chance here to uh, save. If you go uh, get this two week supply, and I'm gonna do a show real soon opening one of those uh, on one of my uh, uh, quarantine living sessions. And look, you can save almost $70 right now on that. And if you go for a four week supply, $100, holy smoke. Yeah, there's good savings in here. Look at all this yummy food you get. Uh, you know, we know what situations can cause you to want it. So uh, you can come in here to my patron supply through this link, printwithred.com, and you can find everything they have to sell. They have plenty of supplies in here for prep and plenty of things that you need. Yeah, that's what it looks like right now. So you can go in here and you can come in and check everything else that they got. Go in and uh, pre-order all kind of stuff. They have long-term food supplies, many, many great things here, prepping supplies, 
emergency food, survival items, water purification, yeah, air purification, pre-order food kits. My friends, you can't beat it. I mean, here's a year supply. Uh, you know, we need to consider three meals a day. You know, that's uh, under three dollars a day. Yeah, a little over two bucks a meal. I mean, not day, but per meal. So you can't beat that for, for price for any kind of thing, especially in the last 25 years. So also, you're gonna need seeds. I'm gonna do a video called Seeds of Survival real soon. It's gonna tie into the trail of tears, my friends, and talk to you about the importance of seeds for prep. And I think the seeds are paramount and you really need to grow your own garden. Besides, you're gonna to have to have something to do. <laughs> and this might be a way to earn some income. So look at this. Uh, you can get garden seeds, you can get microgreen seeds, herbs, uh, wheat grass. You can get all the supplies that goes with these things. So gardening, look at all these seeds you got. And, and you get uh, heirloom seeds, non-GMO seeds, microgreens. You've got uh, supplies that go with it. Everything you need right here. One source, True Leaf Market. Use the links from my videos. Okay, enough said of all that. Let's get back into why you may have to choose immediately. Right. Now, you may have no time. You may need to choose today, this weekend, whether you're going to bug in or bug out. If your plan is to bug out, you may need to go because cities are being quarantined. States may be quarantined. Highways may be locked down. You may not have a chance to get out. If you want to get out, maybe you need to go now. <clears throat> if that's your plan, if you live in a city, lots of people and you get locked in then you better stay tight and keep your social distancing up but you might get a bit hungry it might get a bit rough it's not gonna be any fun being cooped up in your apartment so if your plans to bug out go i would not want to be in a city when it hits the fan especially if you're for a long time and some other shoe drops i'm really worried about the power grid if that shoe drops you don't want to be in a city at all now, a lot of you have no choice but to stay in the city. A lot of you choose to stay in the city. Uh, my friend, Dr. Paul Cottrell, he chooses to stay in New York. <laughs> I wouldn't do it, but, you know, it's his choice. There are ways you can make it work. There are city and urban uh, preppers, but it will be challenging. More challenging than I would want to deal with. But then again, I wouldn't want to live in a city to start with. Hey, I've visited cities, but I don't want to live there. <laughs> That's my choice all that said so if your plans are prep out to bug out excuse me bug out you might need to go now hey right now guess it's you that said and you can still travel except you can't go to canada now other cities pardon that <laughs> so my friends there's many kinds of bug out there's the bug out when you have, uh, you jump in your car, you got all your supplies in your vehicle. You, you may have trailers stuffed up with stuff. I don't know. And you go to some location. Now, if you're smart, you've got a bug out location. It's already stocked. It's fairly discreet. People don't know where it's at. And it's like a house, you know, in a sense. Uh, and everything's there. And so you can hunker down in your bunker in the bug out location. You know, we don't all have the money to have that. Though. If you've got that, you might want to get there. Right now would be a good time to go. So you might not have that. So what are the kind of bug outs are there? Well, it becomes where are you going and how are you getting there? Uh, you have to think about that. Uh, right now there's gas and it's cheap, so you can go in a vehicle to get somewhere. But where are you going? Everybody wants to go to the national parks. Um, so if everybody goes to the national parks, what happens? You're in a city of hungry people walking around with big four rifles looking for something to eat and the only game is each other <laughs> after a few weeks that'd be pretty much it but the other game will be exhausted pretty fast so what do you do is that a good choice not really uh and you know once you get there how do you get around what do you do what happens when there's no gas uh, a vehicle is probably the best way to get a lot of stuff out of town quick especially if you have a van trailer something to carry things with. Of course, a trailer can be problematic if you're dealing with traffic problems, hijackers approach you, roadblocks. Yeah, there could be obstacles, especially if you wait too late. Uh, 
So the, the good thing about the quarantine situation of bugging in and bugging out is if you bug out early, you know, you're ahead of some of that. And that's always the case. But it, the downside is if, if you wait, you may not have the opportunity. Now for bugging in, well, okay, let me go back. I still have some more transportation to talk about. I mentioned automobiles. You can always bug out on a bike, motorbike, or pedal bike, bicycle. You can carry a little more gear when you bag out a bike as opposed to foot. Uh, I have bicycles I consider bug out bag bikes. Right now they're painted blue, but I've got camo paint. If it comes to it, I'm going to paint them up black and green, whatever, put some stripe patterns on them, and paint up all the shiny surfaces on them, and off I go if I need to, and I'll ride them only at night time. I do have good night vision. Get on the road and ride at night time, hide them somewhere and go back in the woods. That's my first choice, <laughs> if I have to bug out. Then my choice of bug out would be probably mostly foot. I probably have to give up the bikes at some point. You know, the mechanical devices they won't last for long and forever. My last few months, uh, I've got two identical bikes. I could probably, you know, if somebody else is cannibal with me, we could probably cannibalize one and take turns riding. <laughs> well, so you gotta think like that. Now, now all that said, uh, you didn't think about a bug out bike, did you? Typically, bug out to me is you're walking, you're in the woods, you're backpacking. Well, you don't want to carry a backpack over 20% of your body weight. In fact, you prefer to keep it 10%. You need to travel light, but you do need certain things. I'll cover what goes in a actual bug out bag, and I'll cover uh, the gray man bug out bag. And I've got an excellent example for that I'm going to be using in a video real soon. So I already got the bag. I'm going to show you this because you can blend in for bugging out or just walking through a regular population. That's the real gray man approach. So if you want to bug out, the most important thing probably is to not be noticed, to not be seen, to not stand out when you bug out. Me personally, I like to get in the woods and be totally silent, totally unseen and don't come out. You know, hey, I've done videos on wild edibles. I've done videos a little bit on silent hunting. I'll do more of those in the future, should opportunity avail. We don't know how long these platforms are gonna last because of, you know, uh, they, they may deem that uh, they need to clamp down or they may deem that uh, we may lose our power. So while you can, learn as much as you can. Watch these videos. Uh, get books, guides, take them with you. But you don't want to carry too much stuff. And like I said, weight is essential. You, don't, you need your knowledge up here. You need to practice. You know, Canadian Prepper, for example, he's a real good one to tell you to get out and practice, 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 and he's right. You got to train. So it becomes um, motor memory. You know, it, it's all wired in, just like throwing a baseball, that you know what to do. All right. So bug out, bicycles, and backpacking, walking, silent. I will cover that specifically in the future uh, about the silent man and uh, the, the bugging out silently. I'll go more into that. <clears throat> but right now, I'm just painting the picture. Bugging in. Actually, a quarantine is probably the best time to bug in because at least initially, there should be less zombies walking around. This zombie apocalypse should be somewhat delayed. And that gives you more time to eat your MREs before the zombies get there to eat your MREs. <laughs> But of course, eventually the zombies will come. And by then I'll probably run out of worm food. And you know, hey, I look forward to a zombie apocalypse because my worms have got to eat. <laughs> so yes, bugging in has a lot of attributes, especially if you don't live in a city. You might be able to garden. That's my hopes, I've got a garden. I tear it up, I'll grow again. Of course, knowing how to eat in the wild helps too. And I believe I can defend my garden. Uh, tell me if people want to steal from here. I'm growing mostly medicinals. <laughs> so they're not going to steal that. That's good barter trade stuff, you know, garlic, turmeric. So I mean, if you come in here to eat, you might just get fed to the worms. <laughs> All right. So enough of that. Um, bugging out, bugging in. So bugging in. Once again, we're looking at, you know, if, if you're an older person, a lot of my watchers tell me they can't bug you out. They've got health problems. They got this, they got that. Yeah, bugging in is your best option. 
but you need to bug in with a friend. You need to have backup. You need to build your tribe, your team, your community, because you can't all sleep. You know, what happens when, yeah, you know, if it's just you and you're sleeping, you got to sleep sometime. So I can break in on you. You need people to stay watch. It, not at first, maybe during the quarantine. That's the beauty of the quarantine. It may take a while before the zombies start roving around, but eventually they're going to get really hungry <laughs> after a protracted food chain breakage. Uh, you know, we got more going on than just uh, people grabbing all the supplies in the stores. There is systemic problems with our food supply. There's also uh, supply chain breakages that are occurring when things are shut down. Now, they might restart them, but it takes a while to get everything restarted. And, you know, the, the parts it takes to run the equipment, the equipment itself, there's so many things involved in it that, you know, are, are the farmers even going to plant this spring? What's going to happen? Are they going to be able to get all the parts to keep their stuff running? Maybe. We hope so. But how tight is it going to be? I mean, let's look at the idea of the quarantine and what could happen in a quarantine. You've got uh, diametrically opposed forces. You've got the force that you've got to close things down to keep the spread of bad things from taking place versus the economy crashing. You know, if these guys aren't going over here to work, then this crashes. So eventually you got to release this a little bit just so the economy can operate. But if you open this up too much, then contagion is raging and your population dies off. So you're balanced between the death of your population and the death of your economy. So you've got some unholy balance that the country's going to make, right or wrong. They're going to make the judgments between uh, having a uh, severe threat to the population or a threat to the economy. And basically, the economy collapses. You can't feed the population no way. You've got to have economy to sustain the system at some level. It may be a, a smaller economy. So that we got a lot of dichotomies in this and that there's going to be shortages, which are going to drive prices up, but people won't have money to buy things, which means there's going to be deflation. So you're going to have inflation and deflation at the same time. And you're going to have rapid deflation in certain things, especially if they're not basic essentials. Now, I'm doing a, a new series I've just started called Quarantine Living, and it's going to be talking about the opportunities you can find in quarantine when there are basic essentials that are needed and they're not readily available as it used to be, how do they provide it? Well, you might be able to take advantage of that and provide them yourselves. It might form, give you a means to pay your bills, but you need that. You still will need means to pay your bills. There may be some helicopter money spread around, but ultimately it probably is not going to be enough. You might have a work at home opportunity. I'm fortunate to have that going for me right now. I don't know what lasts when the economy is dying, the tax base is dying off. Yeah, sure, the government borrows, but they can't borrow infinitely. There is a limit to all things. So how far will it run? How far can it run? You need to be prepared to deal with it in either case. But bugging in definitely has advantages because like if you have a lot of, now what did I say about bugging out? You only carry 10 to 20% of your weight in your backpack, preferably like 10%, maybe 5% even. You don't want to pack heavy. So hey, all we got to do is eat a, lot of, eat a lot of food and get big and big heavy and then it's easy to do, right? <laughs> you become part of the payload too. <laughs> Trust me, I know a little bit about that. So, but I, I do know a little bit about hiking and, and such. So, and I've had a really big backpack too. I'll talk about backpacks, like I said. So back to this whole notion of bugging in. You know, if you're an older person and you've got a lot of meds, it's not just your, you got a CPAP machine, as long as you got power, it can run. Uh, you might want to look at some other breathing apparatuses that don't require power. Maybe too late to do that. Maybe you don't want to go to the doctor now and get refitted. <laughs> so there's a lot of things to consider. There's a lot of this upon us. Bugging in has a lot of advantages, but you do need a community. You need a tribe. That enables you to bug in better. So we're going to be forming tribes. And to do that, uh, I'm collecting emails. And after this tax season's over, we're going to really actively work this uh, email list. And I'm setting up a database. Uh, hopefully it'll work. Uh, it's a, a community board where we'll be able to go in and communicate directly with each other. But email me at HAL5, the number five, space, S P A C E, at AOL.com. HAL5 space, H A L5, S P A C E, at AOL.com. And put tribe in the title. And um, we're collecting these emails so we can start forming communities and, and I can look and see where people are 
I'll be I'll be returning emails and asking them some questions like what are your skills, your expertise, where do you live? So we can see where we can form pockets of communities and where people can work together. And I do have an active tribe project in northeast Arizona. A little bit far for me to bug out to when the uh, if they shut all the interstates down, but hey, <laughs> we are in co close collaboration. And who knows, I might be there when it all comes down. <laughs> so, there are many things to look at. The bugging in uh, in a quarantine uh, especially has stronger merits because you're not going to get bugged as fast by, like I said, zombies. Either case, you need that community. Another way to form a community is approach your neighbors make a deal with them and especially if you have seed so go buy some seed so you can make this deal say hey, bud i got seed i know how to guard i hope you've watched my videos and practice a little bit by now i said it's a little late to be learning some things now but hey hey bud i got a deal i got seeds let's cut a deal there uh i'll i'll grow in your yard and uh i've got the seeds i'll grow i got the knowledge I'll ask, maybe help me out a little bit, but then I'll give you half in return uh, because it's your land, sharecropping. So sharecropping your neighbor's lots. I'll do a video specifically on this. I've mentioned this in a previous video, but if you form communities with your neighbors where you're sharecropping their lots or you offer them some food in exchange for some other service, especially if you're a market gardener, you always need a little help. So uh, then you might set up these collaborative relationships with your close neighbors. And instead of being uh, fighting each other over food, you can work together to preserve what you got because you need people that can stand with you shoulder to shoulder when it gets rough and tough. So look at that. Look at what you can do with your community. And rather jab your neighbor, job your neighbor. <laughs> Not nah, but give them, you know, give them a job or, or you know, lease from your neighbor to have peace with your neighbor. Lease uh, the, the yard, garden or yard. Ladies and gentlemen, we have 42 to 47 million dollar uh, million acres of lawns in North America. If you follow the DeVace family model, where in a tenth of an acre you produce 67,000 pounds of food per year with low tech raised bed gardening, you could feed a couple billion people in Amer out of American lawns, fresh vegetables. Imagine that. Absolutely could do it. So <clears throat> that's what we're talking about. There are opportunities in the worst of times. There's ways to collaborate. So let's get out of the him versus the me versus them mindset. If you, if you think you're gonna hold up the rifle and uh, some cans of beans, beans and bullets, and that's gonna be your survival strategy, you ain't gonna last too long. <laughs> you will be taken out by somebody else. And how many times when somebody comes after them beans are you gonna be able to succeed in the conflict that you're gonna engage in? especially when you got to sleep on occasion, or maybe you're sick or down, and then they come in when you're sick, and there's things going around that can put you down. That's why you need to try it. That's why you need a community, because when one's down, the other's up, we hope. So you've got that collaborative, uh, reinforcing social function. And when the close knit cell, you can have some social interactivity, which, we need as human beings, we're social animals. You just need to be able to vet who you bring in and out. And this will be all part of the community development process. Also screening to make sure we don't bring the sociopaths in our communities are probably the highest order thing we can do when we establish these communities. These communities are bug in on steroids, basically. Or we may bug out to a place and have a community somewhere else. In that case, we bug out on steroids, but communities bug in, bug out, communities, tribes, that's the ultimate level of bugging in or bugging out, either one. Of course, the other bug out, like I said, is you just go stealth. You disappear. You go green and unseen. You make little Dakota fires, which I'll show. You hunt silently with blow guns, arrows, uh, set traps, eat wild herbs, and hide in the woods. There's something to be said for that, except there's not a lot of social interaction. <laughs> If you and one other person get a big group like that, you might be seen. But there are strategies, there's tactics. How do squads move through a combat zone? I'll talk about that in the future. Because that's something you're going to need to know in bugging out in a while, especially if you're with a group. All right, so I've covered it. I've talked about bugging in, bugging out. I've talked about 
the fact that we're in a time right now that you need to pay attention. If you have a plan to bug out, you might better get it while the getting's good because the, the, the walls may go up, the gates may come down. You may not be able to get out and around, seriously. We are in a time when everything can change in a moment's notice. I mean, if you look, they say, hey, we, can only, uh, we, we can't get in groups of bigger than 1,000. Then it was 500, then it was 50, then it was 10, five. Restaurants were first told, uh, well, we got to cut your uh, attendees. You can only have people six foot apart in the restaurants or something like that. You know, cut your um, capacity in half. And now it's only carry out. And in a couple of days, it might be, nope, shut down. I mean, you go look at what quarantine means in Wuhan. Look at what quarantine means in Italy. That's what we're talking about. It could get really tight and it could stay tight for a long time. In order to control infection rates, that's what you have to do. What else does this mean? The control aspects of it, that's a whole nother topic. Anyway, so my friends, don't be scared, be prepared. If you're not prepared, you better jump and run fast, but you, you don't need to be out running around now. You may have lost that opportunity. You might be able to order offline. It might take a little longer for it to get to you, but you're going to be probably ensconced a lot longer than that. So I would say go ahead. And I hope I'm wrong on that, but if you get to prep and supplies, then you're good uh, for whatever else may come. So another shoe drop. So I'm saying and thinking that we're going to be in this for months. Go to peak, uh, peak Prosperity and, and, and look at their videos from a couple of sessions back where they were showing the curves where all this can play out in timeline. Yeah. Chris does a good job on that channel talking about that stuff. Yeah. Months. Months. Maybe longer. It could be 18 months. Look at the, what happened in 1918 to 1920. It could be a while. And this could come back again and again. It does have features. And... Like I said, there are other things that could come and other shoes that may drop, not related to any of these. Well, not directly. Power grip, I'm really worried about the power grip and a couple other things. And international tension right now is a lot higher than what you're hearing about. And I need to do a video on that, talking about things to do with, I <clears throat> run past tense <laughs> and chai, <laughs> nah. <laughs> Anyway, uh, you can't fool these algorithms these days, no matter what you say, no matter how you code it, they're, they're getting too smart. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that said, think about these things. Think carefully. If I'm a little bit underplayed today. I've still tried to share some humor a little bit of laughter because I tell you it's important, but I'm really I'm actually really depressed today in my, this morning. I got news at 6.30 this morning that my father passed away. And you may know that my father, uh, you know, he was about to be 99 years old. If he had survived 11 April, he'd been 99. I was really hoping to make 100. I knew all this stuff going around. It wasn't good, and he had a lung problem. And so he was in a hospital getting checked out, and uh, apparently he was leaking fluid into his lung, one of his lungs. If it had been both lungs, it would have thought congestive heart failure. It probably was not. Uh, this thing going around because it would have been of both lungs, I would think. So he uh, got out of the hospital and they put him in rehab and uh, just didn't last. So my father passed away this morning. Uh, you can see him. I actually covered him on some of my videos. I did about three or four videos of my father. He talked about he was nine years old when the Great Depression started. Eight, excuse me, but he remembers before the Great Depression. He can talk about before the Great Depression, he could, and after, and he did. He talked about in the videos. He was a veteran of the uh, uh, of a Great War. <laughs> he is uh, World War II. Not great as in good, no, huge, I mean. Yeah, I'm just trying to avoid all those code words. In any event, he, uh, he served our country. Um, he saw a lot of things in his life. He talks about some of those in those videos. I think they're very interesting because I asked him how you know people ate and took care of themselves during the Great Depression, those hard times. My friends, those topics are very germane right now on both sides of that topic. 
play talking about that more. So you may want to go watch my father's videos to get the insight that he brought to us from almost a hundred years ago. The things that he remembers, the things he remembered, the things that he has seen, the things he shared with us are important. There are things we need to know now. We've lost that knowledge, so now's a good time to check it out. And to see them, they're not in, well, I think it is on a playlist on the bottom. But always, if you want to see all the videos on the channel, just go to the videos and click on that button, just scroll through them. And we put stuff in our playlist, but they fill up fast. And so there's always something, a bunch of videos that aren't on the playlist. Uh, unless you just got oodles of time to manage that stuff. I do plan to reorganize mine because I got a playlist for uh, quarantine living and I'm planning to break up some other playlist a bit. I got it. I want to create a uh, eyes wide open head on the swivel news playlist. And I want to cover more things along that lines. And along that lines, we'll be talking about some international tensions real soon. Okay. So I've beat the bush quite a bit here. We've covered a lot of territory, but my videos cover a lot of territory also. So if you trust what I'm telling you and you want to hear more, then please subscribe to my channel and bang the update notification bell. And when you bang the bell, click all. That way you'll get all my notifications. That way you'll see what we're covering across the, the front. I cover a lot of stuff. And if there's something not interesting, just, just go on because I cover a wide spectrum of things. And, you know, so just watch for those things you like. And I, I cover, like I said, a lot of things. So hang in here. The proposition that I bring to you with this channel is I'm here to help you survive thrive and stay out of the hive and together we'll do that we're going to form communities and take action to make sure that some things in this country are safe we're trying to get the power grid hardened and we're doing prayer to try to move this whole world and meditation sessions for those that don't believe in prayer or meditation moments of silence a silent protest can get noted once the movement has grown so there's something for everyone again my friends, I want to thank everyone for watching. Have an awesome day.